boom, there it is, end of video. You guys see, Hair Systems gets chicks. The end, go exactly. buy one. Exactly. Welcome everybody to the channel today. We have Hair System DIY, another YouTuber uh, who's making hair system content with us today. We're gonna have a discussion. Go check out his channel. I got a link down in the bio. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell below. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a couple different things that I think are gonna be really, really interesting today. Stuff that we haven't necessarily talked about on the channel before. Uh, so this is definitely something you're gonna wanna stick around and watch the entire thing. What is going on, Adam? How you doing today? Yeah, good, good, Jake. We've got the sun's out in the UK. We're having a bit of an Indian summer in September, which is all good. Well, that's good to hear, man. So uh, you're over in the UK right now. Uh, what What is life like over there? It's, it's unusual. I mean, 2020's just been that kind of year, isn't it? You know, I'm sure it's pretty much the same in the US. Um, we're kind of having a second wave of coronavirus right now, uh, which isn't too good. Um, there's talk of a second national lockdown. We were locked down for three months between March and June. Um, and it could be that there might be another one up until Christmas. Um, Wow. We're limited now to six people um, meeting up at any given time, um, which kind of sucks because it's my birthday pretty soon and I was kind of hoping to see all my mates and that's gone out the window. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're trying to make the best of a bad situation. I, I think in, in, in the UK we always, um, we're quite good at, I suppose, hanging in there and sort of sticking together through the tough times. And we really sure. are doing that at the moment. You know, there's a massive community push at the moment um, to get people talking um, and, uh, you know, stuff like Zoom and stuff has been super helpful for us here. Because otherwise sure. we would have just, I don't know what we would have done 15 years ago if this would have happened, you know? Would have been tough. So got some interesting questions about that situation and, and how you're dealing with it uh, regarding uh, everything that's going on in the world uh, at this current moment how are well, let's just bring it into hair systems how are you managing this whole situation how has it affected you how have you been been moving through it you know there's a shortage let's talk about it really good question um, I think having a little bit of experience prior to the lockdown, the pan, you know, what's been going on in 2020. I had a bit of experience doing things myself, and I think that's been really key um, to sort of getting through this period with the hair system because for a lot of it, you know, we have had to do things ourselves. You know, we have had to learn how to, you know, potentially cut our own bio hair, to um, on the system, to remove a system, to do up, to deal with. Sort of lifts and stuff like that and i think before um for a lot of people and my 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 stylist will confirm this um is that a lot of people never even did this before they mm. just got their stylist to do everything and i've always been saying to subscribers on my channel you need to learn to be more independent when it comes to you know you have to learn to maintain your system because you know when something like what we've been going through the last six months happens you're screwed otherwise you know, um, so I think having that framework in place um, prior to lockdown, um, and this includes watching other people's YouTube videos, you know, watching other people um, do a system rebond, uh, watching other people cut their own bio hair, you know, all of these kind of things came in massively helpful, uh, came in really helpful for me, because otherwise I think I would have been really, really screwed. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Um, it's been an interesting time for for everybody, and uh, just on the side that you're talking about of of really maintaining and taking care of it yourself. I mean, I harp on that all the time for people. I, I think that, uh, and I'm not trying to take business away from from stylists, but more so, it's just you have to be prepared, even if it's not uh, a, a global situation like we currently are even if it's like hey you move across the country which guess what insider scoop i'm going to be doing in about two months um or or you know maybe you you lose your job or or whatever it is let's just say there's a life circum life happens and to not be prepared 
uh, is, is a very dangerous position to find yourself in, in every single way, whether it be uh, financially, whether it be uh, relationally or psychologically or pair systemly, <laughs> if that's a word. But uh, no, I, I think that's that's really uh, that's really important. You you actually said it, if you don't mind me sharing that, uh, like uh, the the global situation has affected you like financially, massively, right? Massively, yeah, massively. You know, as a freelance uh, self-employed person and anyone who's self-employed or even furloughed um, globally will be able to relate to this. You know, we've all lost business. Um, you know, there's been a global economic shutdown. Um, you know, when you're not earning what you used to earn, you do need to be more self-sufficient. And I and I and that completely um, plays into hair systems as well. You know, you may not be able to see a stylist anyway. You know, they're not cheap. Um, you know, some of them aren't expensive, but they're not cheap either. And sometimes you just need to learn to be more self-sufficient take the initiative and basically do it yourself you know um i watched it took me watching probably about four or five youtube videos people cutting their own hair watching that several times before i felt confident enough to even do it myself but putting that time aside has actually paid dividends now because now i know how to do it you know i'm saving money when i would have been going to a stylist perhaps previously i'm like well i don't need to i can you know Myself. That's awesome. That's really awesome, man. I mean, that's incredible that you've taken that initiative and you learn how to do that skill. It's a, I'm not gonna say it's a tough skill, but it's a tough skill. <laughs> I think I just said that. Um, but it's 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 challenging, you know, to to do anything to yourself that requires a lot of dexterity mm. is pretty tough. So that's that's cool that you you've taken that on and you've learned that. Having um, a lot of mirrors in my. <laughs> Yeah, you, you have a 17-way mirror that you can see every single side of you. So you just look like you're in like a, a diamond with all the facets well, the and stuff. Well, the wall of mirrors in, uh, you know, when you go to fun fairs and they've, you go into that thing and there's all those mirrors, like... Oh, is that what your bathroom looks like? Or do you, you actually just go to a circus? Must, well, you know, if the bathroom's out of you, you sort of shit up the circus, yeah. There you go. I mean, why not, right? Just... It's 15 bucks to get in the circus. It's okay. Um, that's awesome, man. So uh, have you been affected by the... Uh, uh, the shortage of supply, you know, uh, for those out there that are, are looking at this video or, or they're interested, there's somewhat of a shortage as far as hair systems right now. And it's not necessarily due to, um, the global situation, but some more like, um, affairs between different countries and, and, and nodding is, is they haven't been finding the right people to mod, not the systems and they've had to change their supply chains. Has that affected you and your hair systems? Me whatsoever? personally, no. Um, I've, I've been quite lucky. What I tend to do is, and I'd, I'd urge anyone to do this, always have at least two hair systems to hand that you're going to plan on using in the future because if something like this does happen, you got a backup. And I think that's absolutely crucial. You know, I always have, so this one, this system is brand new and I've literally got one right here, unused, good to go. You know, yeah. I know that if there is a shortage, I've got this one. And I think that's a really good thing to have um, in your locker, you know, a backup. Um, I think that in the UK as well, because we are effectively a transit destination, so Heathrow is effectively a transit airport where you get so much traffic running through it, um, we have in terms of distribution, everything else, you know, considered distribution wise, we haven't been so badly affected. I know parts of the States have, and certainly parts of other parts of Europe have, but we've kind of been quite lucky in the UK. What was it been like in America? Has it been where you are? Has it been quite bad? Uh, regarding yeah. hair systems? Um, well, no, I mean, for me, I don't know about for other people. Uh, I know most people are experiencing hair system shortages, but I think it's, uh, I know it's predominantly due to the color of the hair system. Like a, there's a much higher demand for um, very dark, uh, you know, black, almost black 1B type hair system. So uh, those folks are having that problem globally. But um, luckily we have lighter yeah. hair. 
So um, there's not as many people globally that, that are dealing with that. I mean, the whole Indian population, um, Asian population, we don't have to <laughs> necessarily compete with them for hair systems, if you will. So so that's been good, I guess. Um, <laughs> sur- <laughs> survival of the light hair. Um, no, but that, okay, so that's really interesting. Uh, how So how long have you actually been, been wearing a, a hair <clears> system now? Um, probably, a, I'd probably say about, yeah, over a year and a half, probably about 20 months. I started February 2019, and I got wow. system um, was, it was a French lace with a poly perimeter. Um, it was the most uncomfortable thing I think I've ever worn in my life. And I've worn some really uncomfortable things um, to try and look cool. Um, but this by far was the most uncomfortable rug I've ever had to wear. It was rug. so itchy, it just looked rubbish. Um, I just wanted to, and I remember you were saying when I was speaking to you last time, um, that you just literally tore it off one day. And yeah. I was so close at times, and I remember several occasions that when it came to a rebond I took it off and I was like you know what maybe I won't put it back on again because it's actually comfier not having it on you know it's just mm. much comfier to just leave it off and just accept that this is me and all of this stuff and you know kudos to anyone who wants to do that but I'm glad that I stuck with it lasted about four months the itching and the uncomfortable the, the discomfort then your brain sort of adjusts, you know, your your um, your neurology sort of, you know, um, I think it's called neuroplasticity, where your brain makes new connections and it doesn't bother you as much. You don't even notice it. That's awesome to hear. Uh, it's good feedback for, for those that are just beginning to walk on this journey. I had a little bit different experience with that transition period, but, uh, you know, every, everyone's got a different experience. So... You uh, you said you have a new unit yeah. right now. Yeah. What is the details about this unit? People always light me up because I've never really asked about like, oh, tell me about your hair system. I'm like, tell me how you yeah. feel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, this is, um, so this is a, a poly base. Um, this is only my second poly base, um, but it's a lace frontal. Um, I do like having my hair up. Um, I do like either having it in a quiff or having it pushed back. Um, it's really comfy. This is the comfiest system I've ever had. And um, and I'm sure so many people listening to this can relate to waking up in the morning and having an itchy system, just wanting to itch it, or at late at night, you're getting to bed, and because your head is pressing against the pillow, it can make it really quite uncomfortable, quite itchy. With this system, I've had absolutely none of that for the first time since actually being a system wearer. Um, so I could definitely see myself getting this system in the future, just for pure comfort. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it seems as well, um, I'll need to do a test on this, but it seems as if when you're getting glue off a poly base, it comes off easier than it does a lace base. Uh, so yeah. I need to do a bit of a clean up on the side, and it came off so easily. It took like a minute. Get off the glue and boom. Whereas lace took quite a bit longer. Yeah, I love uh, attaching to poly just because it's it's so easy to just. I, I mean, you don't have to get under the tape and you gotta kind of work it. But after that, it's it's pretty much just cinch and and you know after it's really easy to clean it. You know, take some dish soap or some C22 and it just it yeah. dissolves. It's just, it's a very very quick procedure. Well, that's great, man. So. Uh, getting back into what i want to talk about uh and everybody watching my channel you get to hear what i ask um but you uh you're you're dating somebody uh your skype name for those that are wondering is your name plus a female's name so i'm assuming that that's because you uh have missus in your life yeah yeah so okay. we've been together for 2019 so we've been together for like 18 months now um and did you so did you find her after the hair system or before yeah, the hair I, system? Yeah, I'd only been wearing it for like two months. Um, for- Boom, there it is, end of video. You guys see 
Hair systems gets chicks. The end, go exactly. buy one. Exactly. Yeah, it was like within about two months and um, I knew quite early on that, you know, when you've got that spark with someone, um, you, you've just got that feeling and I knew that I was going to be with this person for a long time and um, it's, it's turned into something really special and I was like, well, you know, what, what's the point in me being dishonest about, you know, if I want to be my best self, if I want to be completely truthful in my relationship, I'm going to have, I'm going to be 100% honest with everything you know, in my life. And, and I knew by that point that she wasn't going to make a judgment on me for a decision that I'd made, which was going to help the hair, hair pulling condition I've got, help my confidence and self-esteem. Um, and I just said, I just said to her one day, I was like, look, I've got something to tell you. It's to me, it's it's quite a big deal, but I don't know how you'll respond. Even though secretly inside, I kind of knew that she'd be okay with it. Um, I, I wear this isn't my hair. Um, this is, you know, hair from China or wherever the hell it comes from. I don't know. Um, she was fine with it, and and I think we can catastrophize in our own minds about how bad something might be before it's even happened, and it's almost like we've lost the fight before we've even started and that's why I think a lot of people don't go through with you know telling a significant other or a parent why they've got a system and I was just completely honest about it and it was fine uh, same with my mum she was like mm. she was like proper cool with it she was like yeah it looks awesome you know rock it um, I was yeah it's as I said before 99% of the battle with my heads yeah yeah that's awesome man so first i mean you mentioned a hair pulling condition so we're gonna get back to that in a minute but i want to stay on this point so um yeah I, I think that that's actually really great advice that often we catastrophize uh things that we're insecure about or things that are you know we're working through and that goes maybe for hair systems like you're talking about but it goes for I would say, well, I've seen that in my life just with expressing emotions. Like I catastrophize sharing my emotions with those that I love. I think that if I share that, and I know <laughs> I need a doctor, um, but I feel like if I share those emotions that they'll leave me. Like it's something I have to work through and um, it's embedded in trauma. But the only way forward through that is uh, to share and to be brave and to be courageous and to see no, those that care about me are not going to leave me just because I expressed something to them that maybe they didn't want to hear. Um, and and, and bringing, bringing it back to the hair systems now. I mean, I imagine that that moment that you had with her and uh, you, you know, you, you felt this special spark, let's say, and then, you know, you told her, I'm sure that was a moment of uh, connection where you realize that, that see, someone saw you beyond just this one thing uh, and and was willing to embrace you for yeah. being you. Yeah, totally. And I think when you share with someone the fact that you are a system lecturer, that is literally one of the most intimate pieces of information that you can give someone about your life. It really is. And it, because it's something so personal to you and it's something that means so much to you it can really build a very, very powerful connection with someone. And it can build a really mm. strong, not just bond, but level of trust with that person. Because you're trusting that person with a piece of information which is very important and or very sensitive. Um, yeah. So, you know, when I got that response and, and I was like, this is such a relief you know, such a sense of relief as well. It felt like a massive burden had been lifted off my shoulders. And and I'm not saying that, you know, everyone should, um, who they might be dating or, or, or in a relationship with, I'm not saying that everyone should straight away just be like, hey, guess what? You know, I wear a toupee or, you know, whatever. I think you have to judge the moment, um, but also get an idea of, potentially how open your partner might be to knowing that information. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't think that there's any rote way to go about and, and tell everybody. And I think reading the situation and the relationship is key. Um, I think, you know, if you're, if, 
if you are like long term looking to build a relationship with someone though eventually it's it's probably something you should mention not because you're hiding a secret but just because like hey it's part of your life and i mean ultimately you share parts of your life with people that you care about and um scary but it is what it is you know my experience with relationships and hair systems so far has kind of been inverse where um i was already dating somebody and i you know i was looking at getting a hair transplant but they knew that you know i was not happy with you know my hair and i went and i i searched out hair systems after my uh my turkey transplant kind of like blew up in sm smoke it really something told me not to go like intuitively so i listened but um i started looking this stuff up and i approached uh my the person that i'm dating i said hey i'm thinking about doing this 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 looks really cool um i think i want to do it what do you think and they were like whoa that's really interesting uh how do you feel about it and you know my girlfriend basically put it back on me we have very very healthy boundaries around that stuff and uh, so i went i did it and you know she was the first person i saw like when i came back i i got it done um went to a restaurant and that was the first people you know just in the restaurant that, that saw me with a hair system and it felt like i was like a i was in like a action thriller movie where it felt like everybody was like gonna jump me in the restaurant because i thought they were like looking at me and staring at my hair system but uh I drove back home after that and um, my girlfriend was the first person that I saw and you know it's never been she was really excited for me and and thought it looked great and just like wow you look like a completely different person and, and you look you look great and that support was was so um, I think it was really huge you know I I knew I wanted to do it but to to have a cheerleader in my corner was was amazing yeah um, so I, I mean, I haven't actually had the experience of having to, to tell someone that I'm dating that doesn't know that I Some, am wearing. Something I'd like to touch on, which you mentioned there, um, was regarding going out to, you went out to, you, you got the system fitted and you went out to a restaurant and you thought that you're kind of looking around to see people's responses, to see if they're looking at my hair and all this kind of stuff. And I think it's really important to mention because that is a completely normal thing that every single person who's ever been through this procedure will do for the first couple of months of having a system. And I think it, it, it comes back to, we are very, we've always been self-conscious of our hairline when it starts going. And I think as a result, we're gonna keep our eye on how perfect it looks. You see what I mean? How natural yeah. it looks. And we can almost, again, get into this, my mental tennis scenario in our brains where we're just like everyone's looking at me it looks fake it doesn't look normal it doesn't look natural and all this kind of stuff and actually people don't give a people don't give a fuck, excuse my friend but people don't give a fuck, you know about what your hair looks like because they've got their own lives going on they're focusing on themselves the people they're with they're not going to be i think it's really important to mention that to new wearers because I think a lot of people get so anxious about it, understandably, but at the same time, people are not looking at your hair. You know, people are just getting on with their everyday lives, doing their thing. I 100% agree. And thank you for, for giving me work, work to do on the edit. I uh, I now have a note to go back and, and bleep that out, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's great, man. Um, so the last thing I wanna touch on, uh, just because this video is already getting pretty, pretty long, so you mentioned that you have a hair pulling condition. So uh, let's let's talk about that a little okay, bit. Okay, so um, yeah, when I was about the age of two, so this is really young we're talking, um, apparently one day I came back from nursery and according to my mum, I was pulling chunks of my hair out. Now, I mm. don't know what happened at nursery that day um, to make me start doing this. Um, but ever since that day, I've been pulling my hair out um now the science behind it um seems to suggest that it starts through some form of trauma that you've experienced in your past i have no recollection of what happened i was two years old but ever since then i've struggled with this condition and I, you know i'd go into school and i'd get bullied a little bit because i'd have patches of hair missing in my head and mm. like what's wrong with you do you have cancer or chemo 
And I was like, no, I was, I was just put my hair out. And it was all kind of embarrassing, but I didn't really have any control over it. It was a subconscious urge. <clears throat> anyway, um, when I started losing stuff on top, I um, came across hair systems, and I also came across it being used as a treatment for trichotillomania. So I thought, well, nothing else has worked up until this point. I was like 29 at the time. Nothing has worked. I've had this condition for 27 years. Um, let's see if this can work. Let's see if this can make a difference. And it really does, you know, it's not my own hair, so I don't actually get any subconscious urge to pull it. Mm -hmm. um, as a result, wow. it seems to have really made a difference to my condition as well as you know, my hairline. Yeah. Now, do you think that's a forward, not retroactive, but proactive treatment? Like, so let's just say you did grow out your natural hair again. Do you think that you would have no problem with it? Do you think that you've like conquered the condition or is it something that is going to I think it's something uh, that's with you for life. Um, and it's something that will persist if you just went back to, you know, the status quo. Um, this is something that manages it. It's not curative. I would recommend anyone who does have a hair pulling condition or even a hair twizzling condition um, that this can really be um, a, a really effective way of managing it. So it must be linked. I mean, now I'm just curious, but it must be linked to the sensation of uh, yeah. of like tension inside of your scalp or something, right? It's 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 this feeling of like the the actual. I don't know. To describe describe it, it. It's a stress reliever. So you're you're, mm. you're filling with your hair. That's the distraction, and then the to distract yourself from whatever's going on in your brain. Um, and then when you pull, it's it's almost like a stress reliever. I think it sends, I think it sends some serotonin off or some dopamine off. I think it's dopamine. So basically, what you're saying is that you're really kinky and you're into pain. Yeah. <laughs> As a side note, I've got a pain condition anyway, so yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, look at that. Jay yeah. Kent solves it all again, man. I'm not about hair systems. I'm about. I'm like a. I'm essentially just a detective. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm just really <laughs> smart. <laughs> I'm really smart. I'm like Trump. No. <laughs> Well, cool, man. Um, thank you for sharing all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll make sure to put that in the description. Hopefully people find that if they do have trichotillomania and they are suffering from that. Um, I, I, I hope that you talk about it more on, on your channel because I think that's a pretty niche thing and uh, something that people will get a lot of value out of. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I hope that you got some value out of that. I think it was really interesting hearing, one, uh, how Adam is dealing with the current global situation. Um, talking about dating, romance, uh, relationships, and ultimately, you know, trick to mania is, is very, very interesting stuff. And uh, I want to thank you and honor you for, for sharing your knowledge and your time with everybody on my channel. Make sure to go check him out on his channel, which will be linked in the description. We will see you soon.